We are in the middle of a series that's going to just revolutionize your life. Nudge your neighbor and say, you've got to understand this. You have to. You need to. You need to. It will change your life. Well, pastor, how do you know that? It will change mine. Nine years, panic attacks, antidepressants, judgments, liens, IRS liens, living on a pawn shops. But I'm a millionaire today. I know what you're thinking. No, I was already out of debt before I started this church. You got to deal with this religious stuff first, you know. <laughs> I didn't start this church to make money. I started this church to help you. Amen. I was already out of debt. So I, when I say I want you to have this, I want you to get this. Because you need to be asking questions. How did that happen for him? <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 is our key scripture for the series. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for anyone who enters God's rest also rest from his own work, just as God did his. Let's put up Genesis chapter three. Again, this is review. I'm gonna review for a bit here because we gotta kinda of get this in our spirit here. Now this is going back in history. This is back in Adam and Eve's day, of course. And you'd have to agree, Adam and Eve didn't have problems as far as provision went. No sickness, disease. God made them. They were created at the end of the sixth day to live in the seventh day, right? Man was created at the end of the sixth day of creation. And that was because everything was there. He could now live in the seventh day with his purpose. All right. Adam, of course, rebelled against God's plan. Believe Satan's lies, came under Satan's jurisdiction, lost the Garden of Eden, lost God's provision. And this is what God said to him, because you listen to your wife. That part's not bad. <laughs> ladies, I, I read that. I'm thinking these ladies are going, that's not. No, that's good. It's just he made a decision based on facts that he didn't have all the facts. And he should not have made a decision. But you listen to your wife. But anyway, I'm not saying not this is your wife. Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Let's move through here quickly. Through painful toil, you'll eat of the earth. Move through here. Uh, it'll produce thorns and thistles for you. Verse 19, I want to go there. By the sweat of your brow, you'll eat your food from the earth. So painful toil and sweat is the system that was left. After Adam lost God's provision, basically he was saying, God, you're out of here. And God said, I know that. You're tying my hands. Now because you have rejected me through your own painful toil and sweat, you'll have to make your own way. All right, that's where we grew up. I said this every week. I'll review it again. That's where you grew up at. That's the mindset you had, that anytime you needed provision, the immediate response would be painful toil and sweat. That's how you calculated it. If you're looking at a bigger house, you'd calculate it. Do I have enough painful toil and sweat to get it done? You need something else, you calculate how much more painful toil and sweat can I add to the situation to bring the provision that I need. Is that right? People are tired of running. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, the unbeliever, people that don't know God's system of doing things, run painful toil and sweat after the things of life. And he also said the things of life are not life. Life is more than the things but today we find the whole system upside down. Those things, houses, cars, whatever it is, clothes, are designed to serve you and your purpose. But now we find man serving them, working all week long just to make enough money to buy one more month in his house. Right? That's not life, my friend. There is more, there is more to life. Now, Jesus, follow his ministry. You're going to find things that are going to be astonishing. You're going to find in Luke chapter 5, Jesus walking along the shore, finding fishermen there that had fished all night, caught nothing. He borrows their boat, goes out and preaches from the boat, Peter, James, and John. And then after preaching, tells Peter to go out into the deep water and catch fish. Peter says to him, Master, we fished all night and caught nothing. We've tried the painful toil and sweat system, but we're coming up short. Anyone else in here coming up short, although you're putting the labor in? Come on, that's how it is, right? You can't run fast enough to get this thing done. You might, some people can, you know, grit their teeth and make it happen, but I'm telling you, you just can't quite do it in your own strength. So Jesus, after telling them where to fish, caught so many fish, the nets about broke, 
and their, their two boats about sank. I want this picture in your mind to be ingrained in your mind, a comparison. Jesus is demonstrating the kingdom of God. Painful toil and sweat, nothing to show for it. Two boats about sinking with fish. Peter, James, and John were so astonished, astonished that they left the business and followed Jesus. Two different pictures. An airplane. If I showed you a 22-ton piece of metal and I said, this is going to float in air, and you knew nothing about the law of lift, you would say, right. I wasn't born yesterday, dude. <laughs> I'm not investing in that scheme. And you'd miss out because it can float 22 tons in air, float in air, 40,000 feet in the air. The air is pretty thin up there, but it can float there. Why? Because it's tapping into a new law. Everyone say a new law. It doesn't cancel the law of gravity. You're pretty comfortable with that. I can see you sitting there. You're not nervous about floating off your, off your chair. You're kind of, kind of confident with that, that law. Well, an airplane flies by laws, the law of lift. And it's another, another law. And so it is in the kingdom. The, the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. There's another kingdom, another way of operation that you need to learn in life. And that's what we're talking about. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing, and thanks for watching.